Hi, my name is Mike Gaben and welcome to episode 15 of my KSP campaign. You can see here in the building queue that I'm only a couple of days away from the completion of the building of the Cursed Stock 5. And the mission for the Cursed Stock 5 is going to be to rescue Ridfell, who uh, is stuck in low carbon orbit. And we saw him, we actually gave him a bit of a, a buzz by. Uh, we, by about 100 kilometers at the conclusion of the last episode. So we need to go up there and get him. But before that is done, we have uh, space exploration, which is completing its research. And of course, with a new tech node come some new parts. Most notably, this time it's going to be the barometer, which is a new science part. So I thought I would take out my old science buggy and stick a barometer on it so that uh, we can drive it around the KSC and collect some uh, free science data. Now one of the things that have changed since the update is that parts that I've yet to pay to unlock do not appear in this standard menu. I have to go over to some other menus. So I go over to this one which arranges the parts by, um, by tech level. And I'm just going to go through here and unlock stuff that I think I might like. So this onion capsule, that will be uh, definitely something for the future. And I'm not really sure, this happened with the latest update, I'm not really sure if this is something Squad did or if this is due to the editor extensions uh, mod that I have on here, which is what gives me all these extra menus. And I'm not really sure if I like it or not. Like, in one way, it keeps the main menu cleaner because you don't have parts that you don't have, that you don't have any interest in. There's the barometer, we'll unlock that. Oh, and ladder parts, oh my god! <laughs> anyway, um, you know, one one hand... You know, it keeps the main menu cleaner, but I, I kind of got in the habit of of uh, kind of unlocking parts as I need them. So now what I need to do is go through here every once in a while and uh, make sure I'm not missing anything that I feel like, you know, I could use. And with the barometer now paid for, it's a simple matter to add that on to our science buggy and then push that into the building queue. And you can see here that it's going to take a little over 10 days. To, uh, to build this science buggy once again. Yeah, it's a long time, but that's what happens when you put on some new parts. Uh, especially these science parts seem to take a lot of time the first time, but then when you start building subsequent vessels, that time drops down dramatically. Anyway, uh, I think it's time to time warp a couple of days into the future and launch the Curse Dock 5. And this is going to be our first rendezvous mission. And what I was going to do is going to use Kerbal Engineer. And I was going to show you how to use Kerbal Engineer to do rendezvous. Except I didn't put the Kerbal Engineer chip on this vessel. So I don't have any Kerbal Engineer stuff. I also, um, because I've yet to upgrade the tracking station, I don't have maneuver nodes. I don't have those or, or any of that kind of stuff. So we're going to have to, to eyeball this. <laughs> So, so yeah, so instead of it becoming a, a technical exercise, it's going to be a, uh, I don't know, shoot from the hip type exercise. So what I'm going to do, I don't know, I, the safe thing to do, this is what I should be doing. The safe thing to do would be to launch into an orbit that is above uh, Ridfell's orbit here. Instead, uh, I don't know, just to shake things up, I thought, why don't I try... To just launch straight into an encounter so I just kind of eyeballed that and I'm gonna play with uh, KOS and uh, just still do the launch using KOS and just sort of see if how it comes out at the end now when I do rendezvous what I normally like to do is launch so that I am behind my target and in an orbit that's lower than my target because if you're in a lower orbit than your target you'll be moving faster than your target once you're in orbit, and uh, then you'll catch up to it, and then you can do the rendezvous. However, Ridfell is in an orbit that's only about 80 kilometers its altitude, so that means that uh, there's not a lot of room below it before you start to get into the atmosphere. Uh, so the smart thing to do here would be to go into an orbit that is higher than Ridfell's orbit, but be ahead of it, so that Ridfell is going faster than you are, and he can catch up, and then you can do your rendezvous and this thing has a ton of fuel that's my one sort of saving grace in this particular mission because I designed it before the 1.04 update when I thought I would have you know that uh, uh, doing a sense would cost me 
two or three hundred meters per second more than what it actually does now. So I do have a ton of fuel, as you'll see in just a little bit. But uh, anyway, you can hear me talking about what I should do, <laughs> which obviously implies that that's not what I do. I don't know why I did this. I got to be completely honest. Why I thought I thought oh, I'll just go KS, fire it up, then I'll do a rendezvous. You can launch straight into rendezvous. It's a lot easier when you have uh, maneuver nodes because then you can watch your ascent, you can watch the nodes, and then you can pitch up or down and adjust, you know, a little bit of radial burn can adjust where you're going to intersect. But in order to do that, you have to sort of see where you're going to intersect. And in order to do that, you have to have maneuver nodes and those uh, rendezvous indicators and stuff, which you get after you update the tracking station. So this was pretty much a dopey thing to do. I have no idea, by the way, when this thing's going to shut off. It shuts off when the apoapsis gets up to 80 kilometers, but without Kerbal Engineer, I don't know where that is. Oh, there we go. Must have just hit an apoapsis of 80 kilometers. Let's take a look at what's going on here. You can see Rid fell up there, and I am way behind him. Way behind him. That's the worst case scenario. If I was ahead of him, I could increase my my orbit, increase my period, and let Ridfield catch up to me. But I am behind him, which is worse. I need to decrease my orbit in order to catch up to him. But again, I'm only going up to an apoapsis of about 80 kilometers, so I don't have a lot of room below me. Oh, well, we'll worry about that when the time comes. Uh, you might be noticing that I got Bob in this vessel. Yeah, uh, you know what, and the reason why Bob is flying and I got SAS enabled and all that stuff has nothing to do with KOS, has to do with the fact that I put one of those Probodobodyne uh, probe cores on this thing, so I have SAS, uh, and this allows me to get Bob up there. Bob has yet to get his feet off the ground, so I need to start getting some experience into some of my non-pilot Kerbals, uh, and so that's what that is. And then I started thinking, you know what, I do have, uh, I do have, uh, raster prop monitor here. Maybe I can use this to help me get some rendezvous data that might help me. So let's select Ridfell's debris here. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure where any kind of rendezvous data might be. I was just thinking I could have used this to uh, give me my trajectory information, my trajectory data, so I knew what was going on. Got some data coming in and uh, let's see. Oh, here's something. This looks more... This looks more like a docking camera, I think. Not really sure. I'm looking at the information it's giving me. I'll have to figure this out. You know, I'm not on autopilot, so I gotta be a little careful. Let's put ourselves back onto the prograde vector. And oh, it just auto-saved. And it auto-saves when you get into space. So yeah, I'm coming up to my apoapsis, so maybe I should concentrate on on circularization and getting myself into an orbit and then then worry about fiddling around with all this stuff. Last thing I want to do is play around on the inside and crash back into Kerbin. Uh, so let's see here. Coming up to Apoapsis. Normally I like to know what my time to Apoapsis is. I obviously don't know that. So I'm just going to have to eyeball it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this all from map view. At least for those people that, uh, I don't know, are still new and just happen to be catching Kerbal Space Program. This gives you a pretty good idea of how you get yourself into orbit. So I point myself prograde and uh, just start burning. And you can see that my trajectory is starting to flatten out. And what you want to do is just keep extending that trajectory to the point where you end up missing Kerbin. And then once you're missing Kerbin, you are in an orbit. Actually, the other thing I'm going to be doing with this vessel is doing what I normally do when I go into low Kerbin orbit, which is to design the first stage so that it has enough fuel to get my periapsis up to around 50 kilometers. So you can see that my periapsis has just appeared on the other side of Kerbin there. And what I want to do is burn till that's about 50 kilometers, and then I'm going to detach the, the uh, first stage. And what ends up happening when you do this is 50 kilometers is not low enough for KSP to remove that debris. I'm just looking here. I still have a lot of fuel in that fuel tank. Why don't we transfer some of it over? Uh, see, so we've got liquid fuel oxidizer. We're going to transfer, fill up that top tank. Again, I have more fuel 
than I anticipated because uh, my ascent is cheaper than I anticipated since the update. So there, we'll, we'll uh, set up the parachutes and then we will uh, disarm this thing. Or disarm this thing, we will detach this thing. Anyway, as I was, as I was saying, that uh, first stage now is in an orbit with a periapsis of around 50 kilometers. And KSP won't um, remove it at that altitude. It will assume it's, it's in an orbit. But it also doesn't, it's on rails. It's not going to apply any kind of aerodynamics or physics to it. So it's going to continue in its orbit indefinitely. What I can do then later is when I, f when I have some time is I can reselect this de debris and ride it. And as I ride it now through the atmosphere, now the aerodynamics take hold and I can ride it down to the surface and recover it. It's a great way to recover these first stages um, without relying on external mods or any of that kind of stuff. It works really, really well. Uh, and I, I tend to do that with pretty much all my vessels from here on in. I'm getting to a point now where I'm starting to get into kind of a standard design, you know, not just whatever gets me into orbit. And that's what I like to do is first stages, uh, I like to leave them in this orbit with the periapsis about 50 kilometers and then go and deorbit them later. Anyway, I'm just sort of uh, reducing my orbit as much as I can. Remember, I am way behind Redfell. It's kind of funny because I was actually closer to Redfell last episode uh, with the Curse Stock 4, and Valentina got within 100 kilometers of Redfell without even realizing that she was doing it. And here was Bob. Uh, <laughs> and he's intentionally trying to meet up with Redfell, and he's like way off. Oh, well. So anyway, we're going to go around to the other side to our periapsis, and then we're going to reduce our apoapsis uh, also down to just above 70 kilometers, so it's just above the atmosphere. And now I got my orbit as low as I can get it, and then it's just simply a matter of riding it around until uh, until uh, uh, I've caught up to uh, Redfell. Anyway, with that done, I thought I would play around a little bit more with uh, Raster Prop Monitor, and I ended up finding this screen here. And the top half of the screen is all kinds of data about my vessel, but the bottom half is about Ridfell. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think any of this is... I got a relative inclination, that's fine. And then I have... That's an actually useful piece of information. I think the next two times are times to the ascending and descending nodes relative to Ridfell, which if I wanted to match inclinations, I don't really care. It's close enough to zero anyway. Um, the other thing below that, I believe, is Ridfell's orbital period, the 3126. That looks like orbit. I, I, and then it looks like Ridfell's time to apoapsis period. Yeah, that's all information about Ridfell's orbit. So none of this stuff, I think, is going to really help me do the rendezvous. So all there's left to do is to time warp until I've caught up to Ridfell. Uh, at least I have tons of life support. If you take a look over there at the side, I have a little bit more than six days of life support. That's because the capsule that Bob is in is uh, designed for two people. And the stock thing from uh, TAC Life Support is to supply capsules with three Kerbin days worth of food. And so he started with six days because it was food for two people. Lucky him. And so, like, yeah, I can go around like this for a while. But I do want you to remember... Three days per capsule, because I'm now moving into day 128 of this particular campaign. And Kerstock 4, from last episode, was launched on day 125. And uh, this becomes significant in just a little bit. But I'll leave you to sort of maybe puzzle for a bit to think about why this might be significant. But in the meantime, let's talk about the rendezvous. So what you want to do as you time warp is kind of watch the rate at which you're gaining on your target. And when you feel like you're going to be about half an orbit away from matching your target, that's when you want to do the transfer burn. So it's feeling to me like I'm just about there. You know, I'm getting pretty darn close here. So what you want to do is you just want to point yourself prograde. Uh, this is obviously a lot easier once you have maneuver nodes and those closest approach indicators and all that kind of stuff, but it can be completely done with here. So what you want to do is point yourself prograde and then burn to the point where it looks like your apoapsis is overlapping with your target's orbit. And this is a complete 
eyeball affair. I think I can burn just a little bit more. Tiny burn. That's looking largely overlapped, I think. Yeah, I think I'll go with that. I keep popping back into, uh oh There we go. Come on out of there. There we go. Okay, so now it's just to uh, time warp for half an orbit and uh, and have a nice encounter with Ridfell. And we're coming pretty close together now. It's just about time to start thinking about that final approach. But the last time I was around here, I did end up seeing an EVA uh, science thing that I can do. I believe that is over the desert. So I want to grab that first if I can, and then we'll uh, worry about getting the approach there, uh, final approach onto Ridfell. There, there it is. I'm going to back. There we go. Okay, EVA. Grab that science, Bob. At least Bob is feeling a little bit like he's being a scientist now. There we go. And uh, whoa, whoa, oh dear. Ridfell is completely out of life support. <laughs> now, maybe you figured out why this happened. Uh, but when this happened for me, that was a complete shock. I did not understand why Ridfell now has no life support. Now, I can see here I'm under two and a half kilometers, so I just can come into that render distance. So that's why that message came up when it did. But uh, definitely, at least my first concern right now is, uh, okay, I can't, I gotta stop screwing around. I gotta get this, uh, gotta get over there. So what you wanna do is you want to uh, pay attention, put it on target mode like I have here. Take a look at your retrograde vector and take a look at the retrograde target icon. It's the purple icon. It'll pop up in just a little bit. And what I am doing is doing these burns to push that retrograde vector towards the target icon. And once those two are overlapped, what that means is I'm heading straight towards it. Now, again, I was concerned, confused with the, um, with that life support message. I thought at the time, like, oh my God, what's going on? Does TAC give like these guys no life support? That doesn't really make much sense. It didn't do that before. The, I mean, the capsule should have, He's in a capsule, should have three days of life support. Here, because you know, normally I, I, I've reduced my relative velocity down to 5.6 meters per second, and normally I would just time warp over out there, but I'm not going to do that now because uh, time is of an essence. So burn, baby, burn. Luckily, fuel is not a problem, so I'm going to just burn right at him uh, and try and get there you know, as quickly as I can. There we go, 20.8 meters per second. I don't want to go too fast because I'm going to have a tough enough time just stopping, and I'll... I'll get myself in position to be ready to put the brakes on. So it's saying there a little less than two minutes in the negatives for life support. I think, I think he can go 20 minutes without oxygen. I think. Certainly don't want to push that. Wow, that's a little bit spooky. Um, You know, one of the things that might have happened is maybe they just start with no life support. I, that seems pretty poor though, but... I'm thinking what actually might be more likely is that time when I came within a hundred kilometers of Ridfell last episode just by mistake, I think he got rendered at that moment and tap life support kicked in and started to count down the life support and that was about three game days ago and the uh, capsules do have about three days of life support. So that might have been what happened. We'll find out when I start doing more rendezvous what actually happened. Okay, here I got the bright idea that if I did an EVA, the EVA suits have a day of life support or so on them. But uh, no, he's got no life support in his EVA suit, his space suit. So, okay, that's not going to help me out. So I just got to get myself over there. Come on. And then I got over there and went, oh, no, I'm blowing by. Time to put on the brakes. Stop. Burn. <laughs> There we go. Stop. Okay, I've got my relative velocity down to 0.1 meters per second. I don't guess <laughs> actually came out okay. <laughs> so get over there. Come on, Red Fell. Boy, that air in that suit must be feeling pretty stale. Yeah, enjoy breathing that carbon dioxide, Red Fell. It's really, really good for you. <laughs> oh my gosh. I honestly was really worried while I was doing this. Like, I was like, thinking, you know, he's second now, he might die. 
I hate seeing all this stuff in the red. Okay, that that's just the desert that Bob already got. Where's the hatch? Ah, the hatch is on the other side. <laughs> Get in there. Uh, there it is. Grab. Board. Come on. There we go. Okay. And now he can take off his helmet and go. <gasps> Must feel good. That was weird. So anyway, uh, okay, they're good now. I got a little less than three days of life support left, uh, and all I got to do is get them down, so no problem whatsoever. So anyway, next time I do a rendezvous, I'll definitely be paying attention to life support, and I'll try and figure out what happened. But the more I think about it, the more I think that close encounter that I had uh, in the last episode uh, is what is what was the cause of this. And this you know, you think about it, I'm lucky to even get out there. I, I might not have even had this vessel ready, and I might have just gotten a notification, you know, three days later without having a vessel around saying, oh, sorry, Riffel's dead, sucks to be you. <laughs> but thankfully that didn't happen. You know, I'm still actively thinking about this, even while I'm doing this uh, narration, and it seems an extraordinary coincidence that, uh, you know, it's it, clearly those countdown timers... Uh, started at zero at the moment that ship rendered and that would seem like an extraordinary coincidence that uh, When I came into the render distance those you know I just at that exact moment exactly ran out of life support So I'm not quite sure I got it quite right yet. I'm wondering if maybe coming within a hundred kilometers starts pack life support its countdown which got down to zero but the ship wasn't rendered and then when the ship rendered, it rendered at zero life support. I don't know, it's weird. I'm really looking forward to doing my next rendezvous anyway, and I'm really gonna be paying attention to life support, see if I can figure this out. But anyway, long and the short of it, happy ending at the end, Ridfield came down. Ridfield turned out to be a pilot, so I got myself a fourth pilot, uh, and he now is at level one because he did an orbit, lucky Ridfield. And in fact, the own, and Bob's now at level one, so that's great, and the only, uh, person who's flown so far the only two people I have that are not at level one is Bill who's not flown or done anything yet I'll have to get Bill up pretty soon and poor old Jeb Jeb still level zero I'm so sorry Jeb but anyway got all these guys down no problem uh and that's going to have to end this episode thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time